This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and welcome to another performance running gears episode where we're going to be talking about the three highest cushion or max cushion daily runners. And you may have noticed we already had a top five most comfortable and top five most cushioned. And surprisingly, you're going to find a, a shoe that I missed in these three. So let's jump right in. Thank you for joining us here today. I really appreciate you guys. And if this video helps you in any way, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, as well as give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Now, onto the three shoes we're talking about. I don't know if you can tell them here in the background, but we're gonna go through them in no specific order, but we are gonna do a, a detailed comparison and breakdown. Now, I think the most important aspect of any time you're looking for a running shoe is to just set your budget. The three shoes we're talking about here today range from $140 to $165 retail. Now, that does not mean you are going to have to spend that money to get it. I spent total $170 on all three of these, and we'll kind of at the end to let you know how and if that helps you in any way. And obviously, I'll try to put links below in the description as that does help the channel out. So starting with the most expensive but also the lightest and a shoe that I actually have not featured on the channel. And I actually forgot as far as what is linked to the most comfortable shoes or the most cushioned. So I know those are two top five differentiation here. So this would be uh, not necessarily the most comfortable, uh, but it probably would have been number six on the most cushioned. And that's the New Balance Fresh Foam More version two so this i've seen has a stack height of 34 to 30 millimeters as far as having a four millimeter drop uh running warehouse has it listed as 33 and 29 so this is why this would not make it to the top five list which is why i don't feel too bad about forgetting it but also i didn't even mention it so i feel bad uh, i do want to give a shout out and i'll put a link if i possibly can to roadrunner sports in the chicagoland area and i know they do this i guess randomly throughout the country they have they kind of have a vip uh, a garage sale or refurbished sale because they do allow returns up to 60 days and if the shoes are in great condition they still sell those shoes and i was able to get two pairs and another pair we'll have in a future review for 110 dollars this is one of them. Now I was able to get this in a size 11 and a half double E, but if you notice new balance and their sizing, and we'll have a full video on how to get the right size and how to read sizes, 11 and a half is actually a UK 11. That's really a 12 in most other shoes. It's also a European 45 and a half. So that's not exactly, but we're looking at around 46. I know fits me well. And then centimeters, we're looking at 29.5 or 295 millimeters. So all in all, my toe fits pretty spot on. Maybe I could do a 12, but it still works very well. And the width is fantastic. I think this has the best lockdown of all three of these, where it just really draws you back into the heel. That sculpted heel area, I found no heel slippage. This was by far the best fit. Uh, probably the most flexible, which I guess is not surprising since it has just a little bit less stack height than either one of these two. It also has full ground contact rubber. Now this rubber, even from the short runs I've been on, I got it and it looked practically new. You still see some wear here after only a few miles and a few runs. So I don't know how durable that's going to be compared to these other two, but you still have full rubber coverage. So at least uh, it does feel like it has great traction. You don't slip anywhere and it should give you some mileage because even when that wears down, I don't know if you guys can tell here, uh, it does have a fairly thick layer right here of rubber before the foam starts. So that's going to wear down eventually, but this should last you some good miles. Now, as far as how the cushion felt, all three of these are going to eliminate any kind of feel for the ground. And I've realized I don't like that. I don't want to feel the concrete underneath my feet. I don't want to feel a hard surface. Depending who you are, a lot of runners do want to feel the ground. They want to feel that kind of solid surface as they push off. At least for myself, I don't enjoy that feeling. So all of these, because of the high stack height, 
even if it feels a little bit firm, you're still not getting that hard ground feel. So that's going to eliminate that, which is a plus for me. This also felt a little bit more natural than the other two just because you did have some flex now all of these are going to have some kind of rocker shape just to alleviate some of that thickness of the foam so when you land if you're a heel striker it flows very nicely onto your forefoot i'm a midfoot striker so even landing here it does roll off quite nicely now one secret and i'll go do a full video on this in the coming weeks is sock and he has in pretty much all their shoes this incredibly thin I don't even want to give you a detailed shot here, maybe one millimeter thick of foam that I add to a few of my shoes. I added it to this shoe, and at least for me personally, that minor difference made a huge result as far as giving me just enough bounce back where I really enjoyed it. Now, compared to the 1080 version 10, uh, compared to the version 9, the version 10 probably had 20% more cushion. This probably ups that another... 25% more cushion. So the version 9 I thought was okay. I didn't feel it had enough cushion. The 1080 version 10, I do enjoy as just an everyday trainer. And again, I wish it had more, but I, I do like that it's not a ton of cushion. It makes your feet get a little bit stronger. This is perfect. I absolutely love it. And as a bigger runner and I'm losing weight here, I'm getting a little bit quicker. I still like that this isn't too soft of a foam so i still feel i can get off the ground quickly it's still protecting my joints i feel great after the fact and it's still just soft enough and again this is not a soft shoe i would not list this as the most comfortable nor is it the most cushioned but it's a great balance and I'm not gushing i don't want to say this is the best of the three but it probably is the best of the three for me personally the second shoe we're going to talk about here and we did mention it in our most cushion video and it was off the list as the most comfortable because i didn't have it yet and that is the saucony endorphin shift now forgive me i did not go over the weights for that 11 and a half double e that did come in at 11.7 ounces so rather lightweight for my shoe this actually comes in at a 12 and a half simply because they don't offer widths so that automatically is about a half size up. And Saucony does run a little bit narrow, but I love the fit on this. I have the entire Saucony endorphin line and I have a 12 and a half in all of them, but ideally 12 and a half on this is fantastic. If you are a wide footer, definitely go up that half size. I already know New Balance runs a little big in general, so that 11 and a half actually fit really well. Now this comes in at the second lightest at 12.1. So not the lightest shoe, but with how much cushion you're getting, this is officially rated, I believe on Road Run, on a running warehouse at like 35 and 31. So this is definitely a super high cushion ride. This probably has the most rockered version or uh, as hoka calls it their meta rocker uh, this is called the speed roll on the saucony and that simply allows you to land whether it's on your midfoot and roll off really smoothly now this the speed roll at least from my gait and how i run i think just has a beautiful balance so it's not as flexible as the new balance but it is much more flexible than we're getting from the hoka and this is actually about as flexible as what we're getting from the clifton even though the clifton is probably slightly more flexible but again you have a beautifully executed rocker shape with that speed roll you have just a little bit of flexibility and you have easily the most firm cushion out of the bunch now again because it's just a high stack height you do not feel the ground so there's no ground contact in this which again i enjoy you also feel pretty quick in this i think i get my quickest times where it just rolls off and i think if you are looking for something high cushion but you're still able to go quickly in this is a really nice trainer for that uh, again this is not going to be a speed day shoe but it's surprisingly that you can pick up the pace in this and it, it goes along with you. No, it's it's not perfect in that regard and it's not. This is meant to be your daily trainer, but as you pick up the pace, it is fantastic. Now, what I have done is, and forgive me, I've actually taken out that little additional cushion that we have here that I used in the New Balance. Now, I've used it with that one millimeter cushion in here. 
I've doubled up the one millimeter cushion in here. And for the purposes of getting a little bit quicker, making the shoe a little bit lighter, I took it out. So this, I don't want to say is the most, uh, I guess, universal, but having the entire Saucony line and being able to use multiple of those little one millimeter inserts, uh, you really can give it about as much cushion as the Bondi. And that gives away the, in the first place or the third shoe we have here, or you can make it right a little firmer and faster and lighter. So this is gonna give you a lot of versatility. So this is a little more rockered than we're getting from the New Balance. It's not quite as flexible. The New Balance is a little bit softer and actually has just a little bit of bounce. This is definitely gonna be the speed day version of a Max Cushion shoe. And I've loved it so far. This is the one I've had the longest, and I thought this was perfect where I didn't want to get those other two. Just having getting great deals lately and having the opportunity to get them. I'm glad I got them because they are very different and they are shoes that I really want to work into my rotation. All right, and the last shoe, I don't know if it's first place, this is last place, easily the heaviest. This is the Hoka Bondi 7. This is the big boy uh, at Running Warehouse, has it listed as 36 millimeters in the heel, 32 millimeters in the forefoot. So we're looking at 32, 31, and 29 as far as the forefoot stack height for all three of these. This is weighing in at 12.4 ounces. So you're looking at quite a bit heavier than the New Balance and just slightly heavier, heavier than the Saucony. Uh, overall, it's not light, but it's lighter than you would think. Now, I, this is the first Bondi through all seven generations that I've looked at, and it's not bad. This is not insultingly terrible, but this is a dad shoe, and this gray colorway is definitely shouting your old school, like 990 New Balance and dad shoes. Uh, but uh, this is one of the few colorways you can get in widths. I was able to get this in 11 and a half wide as well. Again, same thing with the New Balance. This is a UK 11. This is actually a Euro 46. So the fit on this is actually pretty good. Maybe I would have preferred a 12 uh, just because I do feel a little tightness here, but it's been breaking in. I still enjoy it and it hasn't had any irritations. Uh, but if you have a wide foot, you can get these in with options. I would go true to size if you don't have a wide foot as the lacing and the materials really torque down nicely. Uh, this one, the lockdown was good, but it wasn't as good as a New Balance and it doesn't have that fluffy tongue that the Saucony does. So I thought I was able to get a little better lockdown. Uh, the New Balance, funny enough, even though this is the fastest, you still have plenty of cushion all around the ankle area. So this is something I would still like to wear casually. This one, I don't want to walk around casually, but if you're standing around all day, this is actually really nice. If you have a job where you're just on your feet, this has a ton of cushion. Now, how does it feel? All right, so I tried on the Bondi 6 in store, didn't get it because I wasn't impressed. Try on this in store, and this actually has quite a bit more bounce than the Clifton. The Clifton is very marshmallowy, very soft. So it's very different. Even though this has more cushion, it's quite a bit more firm. But as you run and move around, the rebound is, is excellent. I believe this has a little bit more rubber content. This is way bouncier than either one of those two. So it, there's that going for it. So it still feels firm, but bouncy. So it's a really nice compromise. You're not sinking into this as you might think that you actually would in a Clifton. For someone looking for the softest shoe, go with the Clifton. Second in this roundup would be the Fresh Foam, which I think is a nicer balance if you're walking around all day. Uh, whereas this, I think is a little bit nicer for just standing. But let's look at that flex or our lack thereof. There is almost no flex to this, and this you really have to work with that rocker or early metal rocker shape. And it's not meant to go fast at all, but you find your speed, you know, where you're just cruising along. And uh, I think like with the SJD, you know, if you watch his channel, you know, you just bump along and you, you log in those miles. And I found it really enjoyable. Now it does start to feel heavy underfoot actually towards the end of my run uh, where I start to notice it. But at the same time, 
as you're training, having a heavier shoe is not terrible because when you put a lighter shoe on, you're going to see those results as far as being able to have a little bit faster turnover, having your feet feel stronger. So there's benefits to using a shoe like this in your rotation where you have a lot of cushion, a lot of stack height, it's a little heavier. And then you alternate that with something that's quite a bit lighter, that's maybe a little more flexible, where you can start picking up the paces and all of a sudden, all those miles you've put in at maybe slower paces and you're building your aerobic capacity really start to see a benefit in your races and your runs as you get stronger and better. So this has been a really a revelation on how I can use this shoe. I wish it was lighter. I wish it was more flexible. But at the same time, the benefits I'm getting training and having those limitations, I'm seeing results. So those faults are part of the strengths of this shoe and it really makes a lot of sense now this is considered the higher cushion version in the hoka lineup but as i said if you're looking for a marshmallowy soft lighter more flexible shoe the clifton is easily going to be uh, i guess the more versatile shoe if you're looking for just a high cushion option to add to your rotation this is a heavier shoe it's going to feel less flexible and i think you really got to try it on and know what you want to look it for and in these three you really feel a huge weight difference between these two at 11.7 and 12.4 you know it doesn't sound like a lot but that's almost an entire ounce you feel that on foot you feel this flexibility you feel the lightweight upper and the lockdown on this this i could see using every day this is is for my long runs my easy runs and i can really tell the difference so i this is something i might be wearing more frequently but i definitely enjoy the benefits of the hoka now where does the endorphin shift fit in and again honestly for faster days this actually fits in really good as a daily trainer as a faster day trainer this is probably the most universal where you can buy just one shoe i can change or add in those slight inserts so not having that insert makes a big difference when i doubled up on these inserts it actually gives you almost as much cushion as the bondi while still being a little bit lighter having a little more flexibility, having more of that speed roll. So this is the most universal. So they're very different. So depending on what you're looking for, if you need a little bit more stability, go with that endorphin shift. If you're looking for something that's gonna help you with your training, that is that weight is a benefit. You want that cushion to put in more miles, go with the Bondi. If you're looking for just an everyday trainer, you can log a lot of miles, but you just, need that cushion whether you're starting to lose weight or you're having issues with your knees your ankles that new balance fresh from more has been outstanding and what's nice is through all of these lineups you have something you can step down to the 1080 version 10 is very similar with about 20 percent 25 percent less cushion so you don't need all that go with that the bondi you can go down to the clifton 7 again more flexible lighter and actually a softer cushion setup and from the endorphin shift, I would actually really recommend the Triumph 18 as being softer, bouncier, more flexible. So around the same price, all of these are going to be at that 140, 150 and 165 mark. So you can get these. They're slightly cheaper options. But if you're on a budget, here's what I did. So having a YouTube channel doesn't mean I'm getting free gear. I have some free options. I do have a product review coming very shortly that I'm excited about as we've hit 10,000 subscribers. So thank you guys. But uh, first, the endorphin shift I was able to get from jackrabbit.com. They have some sales going on every now and then, and I was able to get this at 20% off on one of their sales. So I'll definitely link that in the description as well as shoes.com where they have 20 25 percent off and 30 40 or 50 dollar coupons every now and then uh, again i'll put a link and this is something i'm not getting paid or uh, sponsored by any means but i want to be able to give you guys some deals so this is 140 and i was able to get it for about a hundred dollars now we go to the bondi this is 150 this is a bondi 7 i got this pretty much brand new and i got it from ebay i'll put a list and the links below this was a shoe that's there's a reason why maybe i didn't get size 12 and it's because i got great deals this is 150 dollars, and i was able to get it i believe for 65 bucks maybe 67 great deal and i'm surprised that it was pretty much brand new in the box 
as far as box it comes with and it is absolutely phenomenal i'll put links in the description again below and finally the fresh foam more was one i wasn't planning on getting this wasn't even on my radar. This is something I, I try to budget for the shoes I will be getting. And I do try to prioritize some of the higher performance and different shoes with new technology or new cushions so I can really compare what's coming out and help you guys out. But uh, Roadrunner Sports did have their sale where I was able to get two pairs for $110. So this came out to about 55 bucks from 165. So I don't know your budget, but between 55 65 or 67 and about a hundred hopefully most of you out there no matter what your budget level you can save or set aside a certain amount that you feel comfortable with whether that's 50 80 100 120 whatever that is set it aside know what you want to spend and then two find out what's the best shoe for you and then just wait to get a great deal I have a colleague of mine who was running in a pair of kind of a daily running shoes, but she wanted something more max cushion. I told her I easily recommend the Clifton 6 or Clifton 7. She went to the same sale and was able to get a pair of Clifton 7s and maybe the Clifton Edge. So she got two Hoka's. One is 160, one's 130, I think. It's almost $300 worth of shoes for $110. And she was okay spending 100 and getting one on sale for 20% off. So she waited a little bit. She knew I could possibly help her. And I'm glad I stumbled upon it and I was able to guide her and say, hey, I think this is a great deal if you want to go pick those up. So I'm really happy that she was able to get her size and really enjoy those shoes. Same thing I try to do for all of you guys out there, uh, all the runners. If I can help you in any way with how these compare and what you can do, uh, please shoot a comment below. Let me know what you want to see compared. Uh, if you want to see me do things in the same lineup, or if you think I missed anything, I'm happy to uh, always get better. I'm thankful for that opportunity. As always, guys, girls, Thank you so much. This is Levi with Sneaker Years. I really appreciate you, and I will come at you later.